What's up everyone? It's me. It's John. I'm that guy that makes autochromes. I'm that guy that never shuts up about autochromes. I thought it'd be fun to put together a little video going over the steps of what it takes to make an autochrome screen plate. This isn't going to be a full tutorial by any means, more of a general overview of what it takes to make one of these things. I'd like to make a full comprehensive video on the whole autochrome process someday, so maybe this will act as kind of a warm-up for it. An autochrome screen plate is the term for the special matrix of starch that the old Lumiere bros used to produce color. Basically, today we're going to be talking about all of the parts of the autochrome except the emulsion, the light sensitive layer. The screen plate consists of four layers, the glass, first varnish, starch layer, and second varnish. For glass, I just use regular single strength like you would get at the hardware store or something. It's a bit thicker than the glass that glass negatives historically used, but hopefully I'll be switching to more standard size pretty soon. After cleaning and drying the glass, we flow the first varnish. The goal of the first varnish is to form a clear, tacky layer on the plate, something that the starch will readily stick to. I make mine by diluting rubber cement with toluene. We're going to pour a little on the plate and rock the plate around until it's covered everything. Then we tip the plate and pour the excess back into the container. We then lean the plate vertical for a while and let it dry. By the way, I use a fumigant for almost all of my work. Making a screen plate involves work with a few different solvents. Ethyl acetate is very volatile, and toluene isn't exactly great for your health. If you don't have a fume hood, you can work outdoors, but uh, <laughs> beware of dust. I just wouldn't do this indoors without really good ventilation. After the first varnish has completely dried, which usually takes about an hour or so, we can dust on the starch. The dark looking stuff right here is a mix of orange, green, and violet starch grains. We just take a scoop of the stuff and spread it around with a soft makeup brush or <laughs> whatever this is. When the whole plate is covered, the excess is then brushed back into the container. I use a second brush specifically to remove the final grains, which makes it a lot easier to clean off the excess. If you were to hold up the plate, you'd see it's not blocking all that much light. That's because the starch grains are still round, and there's a ton of interstitial space between them. To improve brightness, saturation, and exposure speed, the Lumiere's crush these grains flat with a large specialized press. I use a CNC router with a little roller to roll across the plate. It's much slower than their design, but considerably easier to build. It takes about 15 minutes to press a 4x5 plate. Not ideal, but it's good enough for now. When the plate is complete, the press area will look noticeably smoother. Sometimes gunk sticks to the wheel and can make marks like this. I haven't really figured out why this happens, but it's fairly infrequent, so I don't worry about it too hard. And it's still good for a test plate. Even though we've considerably reduced our interstitial spaces between the grains, we still have some that need to be filled in. For this, we use a little bit of lamp black. I dab a little bit onto the brush and brush it around. Be careful not to brush too hard or you'll embed some of the lamp black into the grains themselves and it's really hard to clean off. I give it a really good brushing after all the loose lamp black is gone just to really clean off those grains.
Once it's all filled in, it'll look something like this. At this point, I like to engrave a plate number onto the glass with a laser cutter. This isn't necessary, but it helps me keep track of plates when I'm experimenting with stuff. Now it's time to coat the second varnish. The goal of the second varnish is to form a coating over the starch to protect it from water and any other processing chemistry that might make the dyes run. Not only does it need to be watertight, it also needs to be as thin as possible to avoid the plate losing color when viewed at an angle. Real quick though, let's talk about the hardware for this step. I use a glass leveling table, which is essentially just a piece of glass supported by three screws. I use a machinist level to adjust these screws until the glass is perfectly flat. This is important because a surface that is off level will cause the varnish to dry thinner on one side of the plate. You'll also see that I stuck a heating pad here. The second varnish is primarily dissolved in ethyl acetate, which is an incredibly volatile solvent. It tends to evaporate so quickly that the plate cools down, causing moisture from the air to condense into the varnish. This can cause clouding in the varnish layer and color shifts in the starch layer. The heating pad keeps the plate just above room temperature as it dries. On a leveling table, a certain amount is dosed with a pipette to the center of the plate and allowed to spread for a few seconds. It's then scooted over top a heating pad stuck to the bottom of the glass. The plate is allowed to rest for about 15 or 20 minutes until all the ethyl acetate has evaporated. However, the plate is still sticky due to the presence of a second, much less volatile solvent called butyl cellosov. The plate is then scooted off the heater and allowed to dry naturally. I found that the coating tends to dry much more evenly this way compared to keeping the plate on the heater until everything's dried. You can see here, transparency is massively increased with the addition of the coating. And so yeah, that's about it. If you made it this far, you've got a completed autochrome screen plate. All you gotta do is slap some panchromatic emulsion on that bad boy and you're ready to start shooting. I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this little peek into the autochrome process, or at least found it a bit interesting. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.